Hello, Morgan here. In today's video, I'll be sharing my Scorching Ray Sorcerer build in Baldur's Gate 3 that utilizes sneak attacks to absolutely destroy enemies standing in your way. But this build is more than just mindless damage. The meta magic provided to us by the Sorcerer class allows for sharing very strong buffs like haste across multiple characters. The combination of high dexterity, high charisma and the rogue class bringing in a ton of additional proficiencies allows for this build to shine as the main character of your party. As for the drawbacks of this bad boy, you are limited by spell slots. Long rests are mandatory for this to feel strong and consistent. And more important than anything, sneak attacks proccing on spells is a bug that is enabled by using a bow. If they ever decide to fix this one, you are out of luck and have to rely on a 2 warlock 10 sorcerer build that utilizes hex and eldritch blast to fill the gaps. With the introduction of this build out of the way, let's have a look at the starting ability score as well as the level progression. Now as for the stats, we are going for 8 strength, 16 dexterity, 14 constitution, 10 intelligence, 10 wisdom and 16 charisma. If you do have the hair care, you are going to drop 2 points in intelligence and buff this one the charisma to 17. As for the skill proficiencies, we go for intimidation and deception with this one and try to get a background for persuasion, so you have that one also checked. For the cantrips, we are going with offensive ones. Shocking Grasp for something in melee, Acid Splash for some AoE, Ray of Frost for a slow and Firebolt for damage. The spells is level 1, we are going to pick our Magic Missile and Shield. Shield is providing us with a very strong defensive option and Magic Missile provides us with a ton of damage. For the subclass we are going to choose the Draconic Bloodline. This one increases our armor class to 13, basically mage armor, as long as we do not wear any armor. For the Draconic Ancestry we are going with the Red Dragonflight. This will give us access to Burning Hands, which is a very strong spell early on. You can also choose a pigmentation so the character looks a little bit more like a dragon. So this sums up level 1. The next level is going to be another sorcerer level. For this one we are going to pick Enhanced Leap to provide us with a ritual cast that is going to increase our mobility. A ritual cast can be used without using spell slots. To note, out of combat. For the class passives we are going to pick up Extended Spell and Twin Spell. Extended Spell can be used to increase the duration of CC abilities and Twin Spell can be used to for example double the effectiveness of your haste, meaning you can put it on two different targets. The third level is going to be another Sorcerer level. With this level we can pick up Scorching Ray which is our bread and butter spell. For the class passives we are going to pick up Meta Magic Quicken Spell which allows us to cast our Scorching Ray as a bonus action. For level 4 we are also going to go with the Sorcerer. For this we pick up an ability score improvement, 2 points in charisma. With the hair care you are going to reach 20 charisma, without it you are going to sit at 18. For the cantrip go for friends. Friends can be cast to gain advantage on charisma checks, however NPCs will get hostile afterwards, so you just need to run away after the conversation so they don't catch you. For the spells we are going to pick up Hold Person. Hold Person is a very strong concentration spell that is used to hold a humanoid enemy. We are going to find a ton of humanoid enemies, so this one is going to be very very efficient early on. And we are going to utilize the replace spell feature. For this we are going to drop Magic Missile and pick up Misty Step instead. Misty Step is a mobility spell that is going to be crucial for this class to function. I know the loss of magic missile is going to hurt us a little bit, but we can convert the level 1 spell slots to be sorcery points which we can use to heighten our spells. At level 5 we are going to pick up another level in sorcerer and pick up fireball as our main AoE spell. And with level 6 we are going with another level in sorcerer. This will mark the baseline you have to reach at which your character is going to feel much stronger. Because with elemental affinity damage we are going to use the affinity we picked at the first level, the Draconic Fire affinity, and use this to add a Charisma modifier to all our spell hits. Meaning Scorching Rays, 4 Rays or 5 Rays are going to add your Charisma modifier to the damage. Meaning 4 Rays means 4 times our Charisma modifier, which should be 18 or plus 4 or 20 plus 5 at this point. So 16 damage or 20 additional damage. This is true for all your spells, meaning a fireball will also get the additional damage. For the spell we are going to pick up haste. The twinned meter magic can be used to cast haste on an ally and on yourself, which is a massive massive boost to power. At level 7 you will most likely have access to the Risky Ring in the Moonrise Tower. This will give you permanent advantage on your Scorching Ray, which is mandatory to proc your sneak attacks. This level is going to go one level in rogue, which gives you a 1d6 sneak attack dice. Each and every 
hit of your Scorching Ray will proc your sneak attack, as long as you are wearing a bow. And this will give you access to skill proficiencies. We are going with sleight of hand so we can open chests and doors. And we are going with another point in Deception. Now, in case you do not have the Risky Ring, you can go another level in Rogue, which will give you access to a bonus action Hide. So you can get advantage on your Scorching Ray without the ring. However, you should have the ring already. So we are going with a 7th level in Sorcerer. Again, we have a multitude of very, very strong options here. We can Twin Cast Polymorph to Polymorph 2 targets. We can banish 2 targets or banish them for a longer duration. We can use Great Invisibility to turn 2 targets invisible. All of our attacks are going to be with advantage and everything against us is going to be disadvantaged. Or we can go with Hypnotic Pattern. This will hypnotize every single enemy hit by it. They cannot move, they cannot take actions, bonus action or reactions. However, damaging them will remove their Effect. So you can pick your poison. I personally love banishment. It is a high range, it is a charisma saving throw which not many enemies have a high value in and banishment takes them out completely out of the fight. Meaning if you make a mistake and you are attacked by multiple enemies you can just take out two for basically the whole fight. At level 8, another level in the Sorcerer. This will enable us to pick another spell, which we will utilize to pick up Counter Spell. At this point, there is going to be a ton of spell casters that are going to throw really powerful stuff at you, so having that will help you immensely. And for the feat, if you picked up the Hack Hair, you're going to be at 20 Charisma. If not, you're going to be at 18 Charisma. Regardless of that fact, you're not going to pick an ability score improvement. You're going to pick up Dual Wielder. This will enable you to wield two staffs or two not light weapons in both hands. You're going to dual wield after this point. Next we're going to pick another level in Sorcerer. This will give us access to really powerful level 5 spells, like for example Hold Monster. Hold Monster is the same as Hold Person but works on creatures. You can easily twin cast this one and you will thank me for having this spell in your repertoire. At level 11 you're going to pick up another rogue level, which will give you access to cunning action hide. You're basically never going to use all of those actions, so that's not going to help you at all. However, it will give you access to the next level, level 12, which we are going to go with the Thief or the Assassin. The Assassin is, however, very inconsistent and only very few fights will give you the benefit that the class really provides. So we're going with the Thief for another bonus action, which we can use to cast another spell or cast one of those actions. So next, let's look at the equipment. We're going to basically equip anything that's going to give us additional attack to spells. Meaning this Cloak of Weave, which can be found in the Sundries, the Magical Shop in Act 3. Rope of Weave, same, can be found where Marrakesh is. So the Legendary Staff, meaning in Sorcerers and Sundries, this shop here. So the Rope of Weave and the Staff, Legendary Staff, can be found when you go upstairs, talk to the Mage Dude, then drop one floor, then solve the puzzle. So you solve the puzzle by having a see invisibility, you will see a pedestal that's labeled with below. Click on this one, you will be teleported down below to a platform with two globes. So those globes will need to be solved with Arcana, so you're safe before that, then you safe scum until you unlock both. One of which will be the Rope of Weave, and one of which will be the Marokeshian. Now the Rope also gives additional armor class, but it's not really anything special. The Staff, however, does have some really special things to it. So that's going to be the best Staff in the entire game for this build, because you can use Kreshka's Favor. We have multiple options here. I tried every single one, and I can say with confidence that only Doom and Wrath are going to be beneficial to this build. Now, Flame of Wrath sounds like the better option, right? Because we are going to add our proficiency bonus to the spell. However, when we add this one, this one caps at 4. Meaning, everything above Charisma 18 is not going to be beneficial to this buff. And it is going to stack Heat on us. Heat is going to damage us as soon as we take a turn. Meaning, all of our spells that are going to be concentration based are need to roll for a saving throw because we are getting damage. However, that save is going to be X extremely painful to pass because we are first going to use the risky ring which gives us disadvantage on saving throws and we are also going to have a very high spell dc because that heat is going to be based on this so we need to pass at 20 dc to keep our concentration on a disadvantage basically impossible to pass the only really viable option is bolts of doom now bolts of doom are not half bad it's basically doubling still doubling our damage because we are going to add a few things to this, which I will go over in the damage breakdown later. If you do not use any concentration spells, we are going to still use Flame of Wrath. But if you do, Bolts of Doom are better. So, 
that's the staff in the end game. In the early game, you will find the spell sparkler, which looks like this. Every single spell hit is going to charge us with a lightning charge. A lightning charge is going to add a 1 damage to our attacks. At 5 charges, this one is going to detonate to deal 1d8 lightning damage. Now, this lightning damage is going to be scaled by specific things on our gear. So that's why the lightning charges from the legendary staff and lightning charges from the spell sparkler are going to be insane. Now we can dual wield both of them, which will result in some insane damage, especially when we pick up the wrath incantation. So you buff the fire damage and then you use the spell sparkler in the offhand to benefit from both. So that's going to be the best damage option. You can find the spell sparkler right here near the mountain pass passage right here in this building. It's going to burn, we need to save a person here and this person is going to give you either the spell sparkler or some bow, the vault, whatever. If you do not have the spell sparkler, you can use basically any stuff in the offhand. It's going to provide you with plus to spell attack rolls and plus to spell save DCs. So the setup is going to look like this, basically for end game, if you do not have the spell sparkler in the slot. If you do, use the spell sparkler. Now, there is another staff that's really strong. The staff of arcane blessing. This one can be found in the act one down in the underdark. There is a mage tower. If you complete this one, get to the top floor, press a button that's hidden, you're going to be teleported down below into a hidden chamber where this staff is just leaning behind a door, I think, or a bookcase, doesn't matter, but it's there. So this one is going to be used for bless. When you're going to cast bless, you're going to receive the effect of bless and mistress blessing. Mistress blessing is going to be a separate buff that's not based on concentration. So we can use bless, buff ourselves with mistress concentration, mistress blessing, and then we can use haste because we still have the concentration available to us, meaning we can buff our whole party with this one, like so, so this is a setup. Then you change the staff before you enter the next fight, and you're still going to have that buff and haste and the other staff. You can only do this once per long rest, so keep that in mind. Now, I already showed you the risky ring can be found in the Moonrise Tower at the Alchemy Vendor. Very strong ring, and it's mandatory for this build to really function. Then we are going to pick up a bow. Basically any bow works. But in Act 3 you can find the Deadshot bow in the Stormshore Armory right here at the Vendor. This bow will give you an additional chance to critically strike enemies, which works on spell attacks. We are then going to use a second ring, the Coruscation ring, which can be found in Act 2 underneath the last light in in a chest. This one is going to debuff enemies. So if someone survives or attack, they are going to be debuffed by minus 7 to attack rolls per remaining turn, which is really, really strong but you can use basically any ring. And we are going to use Surgeon Subjugation Amulet. On a critical strike, we can paralyze target. This will guarantee critical strikes versus that target when we are within three meters. Very strong combo amulet, if we are close enough. Otherwise, pick whatever amulet is fitting your build. It's not really game-changing or really mandatory for this build. The next item is very, very good and more than doubles our damage. So the Spellmite Gloves decrease the hit chance of our Scorching Ray by 5, but they add an additional 1d8 damage to every roll we deal with this specific spell. This adds to the sneak attack damage. We can find those gloves by completing the Dibbles quest, so you need to find every piece of that clown and then provide that back to the circus and you will be rewarded with those gloves. Next I'm going to show you some really nifty stuff. So we're going to use Bless on all our party members, like so, or three of them. See the Bless buff right here and the Mistress Blessing. When we now change the staff to something else, the buff is going to keep on our character. Now we buff ourselves with the Balls of Doom because we need to do that after long resting and then we are going to cast haste on us. This will break the bless buff but Mistress Blessing will still stick to us. Now to initial strike we can use quickened magic and the arcane battery we are provided with by the staff and we can for free cast a scorching ray on an enemy with the buff. This will initiate combat and basically completely obliterate any enemy before us. For the damage, the fire damage is the 2d6 by scorching ray plus the charisma modifier and plus 1d8 Fire damage based on spell might. Spell might is going to match the damage type of the damage that's going to trigger this one. Then we have the piercing damage. But what do we see here? It's 1d6 piercing damage plus 1d8 piercing damage because spell might procs on the sneak attack. Now the first iteration and the second iteration of the Scorching Ray, the first time we cast this one, is not going to proc the lightning charges, right? But afterward, for some reason, it procs. So the lightning damage is again 1 plus 1d8. Because the damage is vulnerable, we are going to double that. So that's one specific roll. 
and we're going to roll again the piercing damage. This one was a crit, so we double that and it's 2d6 plus 2d8 piercing damage sneak attack, which will proc lightning charges, which is not bugged out, so it's 1 flat damage plus 2 d8 lightning damage or spell might because the dice is doubled and then we proc the lightning charges which are 1d8 which is doubled plus 1d8 which is doubled because it's a crit so we deal 17 damage additional damage then we have another scorching ray with again another lightning charge and then we deal another sneak attack and again lightning charge and so on and so forth so that's the whole breakdown so every single hit is going to proc the piercing damage whenever this character here is going to activate the wrath and has the spell sparkler in the other hand we are still going to proc the lightning charges like so however each and every single instance of damage is also going to proc four fire damage this instance will have four additional fire damage because of the wrath the sneak attack will not have it listed in this section but again four fire damage right here so every single instance is going to add that 4 damage. And the lightning damage is also going to add this. So when we count and add everything up together, we have around 20 damage. This means 20 times 4, because we deal 4 flat damage per instance of damage. And we have 40 additional fire damage. Again, on top of everything you can see here. This makes this single cast the most insane damage spell in the entire game. It's stacking bugs on bugs on bugs. So it's going to be fixed sometime in the future but for now that's probably the highest amount of damage you will see in a single cast ever anyway this sums up the build guide if you liked this video please leave a like if you have any questions please comment down below don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already you can also join the channel membership or leave a donation if you have the spare coin so see you next time and bye